Hi, I'm James the Light Guy, and today we are going to flash some new firmware onto our Gen 2 element lights. Let's get started by opening up a fresh box. This is a set that I had gotten recently. Um, there are two generations of the lights, uh, and from the outside there appears to be no easy way of telling them apart. So like with all the other boxes we've done in the past, the top level has 10 of these hexagon lights and the lower level has the power supply and controller. So give me just a moment to pull all this out. Now that we have the controller and power supply pulled out, we won't be needing the power supply, but it is really the only way to tell if you have a Gen 1 or Gen 2 controller is the Gen 2 power supply and the Gen 1 power supply are different. The output here of a Gen 1 is 24 volt DC 6 amp and the 12 volt DC 8 amp is a Gen 2. Most of the Gen 1s don't need to be programmed or reprogrammed, reflashed, and the difference between the two is the points or pinholes on the board for reprogramming. Gen 1 panels have the pins on this side, the small side, while Gen 2 are over here on the side near the power button. So. Let's get the power supplies out of the way because we won't be needing them for a while. And we'll take a look at this controller. Um, what we're going to do is we need to open up a hole on this side. So I'm going to grab some tools and we'll get to it. All right, we have our controller. This one is slightly separating. It is possible in some cases to use a spudger and various other guitar picks and tools to separate the cover from the bottom here. Um, but not sure if that shows up on camera, but there is a lot of epoxy residue all over this. So I don't know how well it would separate. So a safer bet is to just Dremel out a region over here. I have one that I've already Dremeled out to show you guys. We can see where we're generally going to be Dremeling out. We want to try and say a little bit lower than what I did there, but you want to leave all of the sides as intact as possible and be very careful not to damage the board. So we're gonna work our way into this one. We're using my battery operated Dremel, a simple utility knife, and I got a pointer stick. Always wear your eye protection and let's get to it. I'm gonna turn down the volume real quick. All right, let's use our knife to clean this up a little bit. All right, looks like we have almost accessed all of those pins. So we're just going to shave that back just a little bit more. If we can clean up some of these extra scraps in there as well. No reason for them to hang around. There 
and there we go. That's a decent hole. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check our adapter cable once I figure out where I put it. Here is the adapter from Speedy One, and you get this adapter and a flat ribbon cable to go with it. And I'm just going to check to see how well this fits in there. If I can, perfect. A pretty snug fit. Now when doing this, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you. Maybe if I clean that up a little bit more. There we go. In the controller, there is a small plus sign next to the pinholes. Whenever we're using this adapter, we're going to be plugging this harness in with the brown side on the right when holding it in this orientation and the other end, whether we're programming a Gen 1 controller or a Gen 2 panel, if I have a Gen 2 panel, sorry, a Gen 2 controller or a Gen 1 panel, uh, again, the Gen 1 panels had their own ESP chips. And if we look closely here, we can see another plus sign. We always put the brown wire to the plus sign when programming. All right, let me clean up all this plastic around here and I'll be right back. All right, the plastic is gone and we can talk about this a little bit more and why this access hole is the way that it is. First, to get one of these adapters, I'm going to put a link to the Discord in the description below and pinned in the uh, development channel is a form to order one of these from Speedy One. Uh, he did a great job making it and it makes it super easy to program these. All right, next, why did I do this so carefully to take out the minimum amount of material on the large side here? Well, I'm glad you asked. If we grab a new panel and plug it in here, carefully, there we go. You can see that once it's installed, you really can't tell that we had to hack this thing apart to get it to work. So the smaller the hole, so long as we can access the pins with the ribbon cable, the better we do. All right, so we now know that when in this orientation, we have blue on the left, and when re-flashing a Gen 2 controller, we once again have blue on the left. We'll get that forced into those holes, and the case holds it firmly in place. The next thing we're going to need is a computer. The first thing we need to do on the laptop is download and install the ESP tool. It works on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, I'm going to leave a bunch of resources in the description below for how to download and install that. It's fairly straightforward. So you guys should be able to handle that. I'm going to open up a QuickTime. And before we do anything else, this file right here, let's get this screen recording. Here we go. This WLED firmware uh, is available on GitHub. Uh, Speedy One has the firmware for the Gen 1 panels or the Gen 2 controller. Make sure you get the right one. This is for the Gen 2 controller that we're going to be using. And we're going to open up a terminal or command prompt window. All right, here are the commands that we're going to be using. We're going to start with 
this ESP tool. I'm just gonna copy that and paste it. I'm gonna put this in the description as well. At the end of this command, we're going to add a space. And then on Mac, all you have to do is drag the file into your terminal. Or on Windows, you need to right click and copy the path name for the file and add that in. Before we run it, we need to plug our adapter in via the USB. And now we can run that. As you see, uh, it did not find the ESP tool. That's where this second command comes in. Uh, this exports the path so that the computer knows what it's looking for. So we'll run that and then we will run the first command again. While that's thinking, there are two buttons on the adapter. What we need to do is press the one closest to the ribbon cable and hold it, press and release the other one, and then release the one by the ribbon cable. If you do that in the correct order and fast enough, it will uh, recognize the controller, put it into flash mode, and program it. Uh, unfortunately, I messed up, so we're going to run that again, but it is press and hold the button closer to the ribbon cable, then press and release the other button, and release the uh, first button. So we're going to cancel that command, run it again, we're going to press, press, release, release, and as you can see, it is now running the, uh, the firmware update. This goes pretty quickly, we're already up to uh, 23%, and once it's done, this firmware will be updated and we'll be able to uh, plug it into our Gen 2 power supply and Gen 2 panels and using the WLED app start controlling them. So we're going to give that a minute to finish its, uh, its firmware update and we'll come right back. All right, we're back. It's finished its update, so we can disconnect the USB and disconnect our adapter. So we're done with that. We're done with the computer. It looks like I lost a little bit of footage during my uh, closing there, so uh, I don't have time to re-record it. I hope that you found this video useful. I will try and re-record uh, the end and the functioning and how to use the WLED app with the light panels, but that's going to have to wait for part three of this series. Again, I hope that you found at least what was in this video useful, and uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or uh, I'd really like to direct you to the Discord where we have more people a lot smarter than me who are possibly, uh, probably better equipped to handle your questions. Uh, I hope that you'll give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I'm James the Light Guy.